Welcome to Pet Fix World. We are so excited to introduce you to fantastic pet parents, pet experts, and talented pet clothing designers from all around the world. We are also very grateful. Thank to you, our podcast is in the 0.5% globally ranked podcast. Woohoo! Yeah! We also have a magazine, so go to Amazon, look for Pet Fix World magazine, and here we are. My name is Vasi. I'm your host. A very passionate pet photographer who likes to give some tips and tricks on how you can utilize your phone when they create beautiful memories, a level of your social media and so much more. And of course, we are very passionate to help rescue organizations to share with you incredible events from all around the world. Pets are family everywhere. So let's have fun, listen to our podcast, enjoy it and see you soon. Hello world, hello everyone, hello, hello friends, I hope each of you is doing well and welcome, I'm so excited to have another really incredible and fun uh, podcast episode, it doesn't matter are you watching this or maybe you're listening it, I'm really grateful because uh, it's so incredible, amazing to welcome back my friend uh, Ali, she is actually an incredible nutritionist who lives uh, in uh, Canada, but Petix Academy community, we are so happy and so fortunate, so lucky that she shared with us uh, a lot of her wisdom. She does help uh, two legs. She helps people and also fur babies. And today she's going to share with us some really very uh, valuable tips on what do we do, uh, especially now when the weather is so warm, and uh you know do we give enough water to our fur babies or maybe not uh and a lot of uh, different interesting tips and tricks on nutrition so without further ado here we are opening the curtain and welcoming ali and apple who by the way speaks spanish so you're going to hear ali talking to her in spanish which is on my agenda one day to learn so welcome back to the show thank you so much yeah. apple says hola <laughs> oh I love it. All the apples. So, so, super cute. I'm really excited. So, are you happy to be back to the show? Of course. I'm always happy to share information. And yes, you know, not only in Vancouver, which finally the heat is coming, as you know, where you live, the heat is there and the rest of the, the continent uh, is uh, hot. So, we forget about the uh, the dogs, which is you know, just like humans, dogs are actually more prone for dehydration. So we have to be very aware. So tip number one, regular hydration for dogs is one ounce per pound. So it's very easy. So my dog, three pounds, I know it's not very big, but she's only three pounds. So normally she gets three ounces of water, very easy. But now we're having a heat wave coming in a couple of days. And just like Florida, I'm sure is already caught up to our temperatures and the rest of the continent is hot, hot, caliente. And uh, so it's usually about two to three times the amount. So it's simple math, two to three ounces per pound. So it's always better to over uh, hydrate per se, especially for dogs, just because they are more prone for heat stroke and there's no turning back, unfortunately, it's, it's quite frightening. Um, so you really want to make sure that you give, I, I always say best to be safe. So I say three ounces per pound. You can't go wrong. They might, might need the bathroom a little bit more, but that's okay. I'd much rather have that problem than the opposite issue. So that is, go ahead. Would you mind also to tell us, you know, maybe like, because some people who live in different countries like yourself uh, use a different uh, measurement uh, system. So can you tell them if you can, or just answer it's easier? Uh, that is a very good question. I so it's not a big deal. I would, but just from curiosity, I mean, I'm so- Oh no, it's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so that's, a, that's a lot of math. So if you look at it, if you think of it this way, four ounces is the same as a half a cup or 125 milliliters. 
there we go. I think I covered it all. <laughs> so okay. that that's that. There we go. We got all the math organized. I'm sure my dad would be laughing at me now because he's an accountant and he always says, "Oh, your math is terrible." And I tell him, "Listen, I'm a dietitian and a dog nutritionist. I don't need math." <laughs> um. Okay. So tip tip number two. Um, as you can see, dogs have skin on the bottom of their paws. So in the summertime, or you know, even now with, or I guess yeah, officially it is summer. But even if it's not summer and it's hot outside, remember it's just like us stepping outside onto hot pavement with no socks or shoes on. So you've got two options. You can either protect your dog's paws and put get little booties for the summer. Otherwise, they do burn. Like people don't realize, by 10 a.m., the sidewalk is so hot that even for five minutes walking, your dog is prone for burning of the feet, of the paws. So you really don't want to go there. Or you can take them out before, you know, super early in the morning. Like we're talking, you know, between 6 and I wouldn't even wait till 9 a.m. depending on your dog. So between 6 and 9 is ideal a.m. Or you wait till the sun goes down, if that's possible, depending on what time of night it is. But you really want to avoid the between 10 and 3. That is the worst time to take a, a dog out. Well, Not only for heat stroke, but just, you know, for protective of their paws as well. I remember many years ago, I had a, a client and we went outside and she went and she put her hand on, you know, on the ground to check the temperature. It was in the middle of the day. We were taking pictures and she wanted to make sure that, and, you know, she had husky, but it doesn't matter if you have a smaller, a larger uh, set of fur baby, you know, doggy or kitty cat, because we do have people with kitties who walk them outside on a leash in our community. So heat, it's heat, you know, and I'm so grateful that you are kind of uh, teaching us. And of course, I know friends, you know better what to do with, um, your fur babies, your wonderful parents, but I also consider that there are some new fur parents who maybe that's their first summer ever. And, you know, maybe they didn't think of it. And what do you think about people going to the sand uh, and going to beaches, especially now in summer? Yeah, that's also concerning because number one, sand gets hot. So it, it can, and then there's different types of, uh, I, I worry about different types of uh, things that dogs can pick up in the sand that you wouldn't necessarily even recognize compared to, you know, just normal pavement walking. So it's, it's not the best option. So for us, we're very fortunate. There's a pathway beside the beach. So that, that you might want to think about things like that. It's just not worth it in the long run, especially things get into the paws and it's much more challenging to get out. Well, Dogs are not like humans in that way. <laughs> I do agree with you. Oh my God. No, no, thank you so much. And what else would you like to share? I mean, those topics and everything else, it's all like interesting and really great points. Are you passionate pet business owner who wants to grow your business? It's easy peasy, friend. Go to our website, petpixworld.com. Check out our marketing and advertising opportunities, and you're going to discover more about our first hybrid pet magazine which is actually in amazon and other major magazine platform uh, and it has video opportunities our podcast is in the 0.5 percent globally ranked podcast imagine people being able to reach out to you and your brand from all around the world we have amazing social media we do a lot of lives and broadcasts we can showcase to the world your incredible new product and so much more at the end of the day let's help our pet community to get to know you and your products so enjoy the rest of the podcast yeah so even we can think about switching some of our foods for dogs when they when they're if they're i mean i i specialize in transitioning off of kibble to whole foods i mean let's be honest i mean look at apple's fur i mean it is beautiful 
That's because it's all whole foods. Um, so a couple things. Number one, think about in the summertime that you want to transition into some more hydrating fruits. Like I personally buy watermelon, but it's cut up. It's frozen. There's no seeds in it because dogs can't have seeds and it's skinless and giving like little cubed frozen. I mean, if, if you can't find frozen watermelon, I mean, you can freeze it yourself. But yeah, that's like a, an excellent hydrating treat. And let me tell you, I've never had a dog owner tell me, oh, my dog doesn't like frozen watermelon. So that that's definitely one option. And just even freezing some other fruits like Apple loves frozen blueberries. She's always my uh, my guinea pig, right? Arendano. Yeah. Apple como arendano. Apple likes blueberries. <laughs> so cute. Oh my she's, gosh. she's looking at me going, am I getting blueberries? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And I remember that video you posted. And so friends, if you're wondering, uh, you know, very often because Ali... Uh, she has a Facebook and Instagram, and very often I do share some of her really cool tips. Uh, and one of the tips you just did recently was uh, you showed us uh, if, uh, you know, for babies, they can eat quinoa, which I thought that is very interesting. And this is uh, here your Instagram. And you talk, uh, you know, every time when you post every Friday, you make sure, which I'm very grateful for, that you talk pet pics. And somewhere here, um, I don't know, it was on the stairs. I think was maybe this one here, if I'm not mistaken. I do watch quite a bit of them. Oh, yes. Yeah. About the quinoa. And so for those of you who are listening. Can dogs eat quinoa? I think apple is uh, tea and ambre. So apple, here is quinoa, apple, apple, here's quinoa, apple, see, apple, here's quinoa, see, vamos. Like really very helpful. And I can tell you, I had actually one of our friends from uh, Argentina and she so, said, Vasi, uh, I keep giving you know, my doggy's quinoa. So that was really cool. And so many like interesting things. So it's good. Okay. We established watermelon. It's a great, and it's really a wonderful treat. So what else would you recommend? For yeah. People? So, yeah. So the other thing that keeps coming up. So just so we understand the only downsides to whole foods for dogs is that it's not fortified for dogs. So you have to make sure that they're getting all of their vitamin and minerals. So I personally like whole hounds. You can buy it online. Um, it's I actually found it in a pet store now, which was interesting because let's be honest, most Canadians ship stuff from the US. I mean, it, it is what it is, so that's fine, especially dog stuff. But yes, it's, it's sold online called whole hounds. And it, it's, it's great because it shows you per pound how much su powdered supplement your dog needs. And then the question is, well, how do I actually give it to my dog so that she's, you know, you know, don't try and trick a dog because they're, they're smarter than you. So I actually put it into Apple's pumpkin and there's never an issue with her having it. I mean, it's been a couple of years now, so. That's, I've never had any client come back to me and say, yeah, that didn't work because pumpkin helps with healthy bowels for dogs. So you're kind of, uh, I, I don't know what the saying is. I don't like the saying killing two birds with one stone because I don't want to, I don't want to kill a, a bird, but uh, you give two, two, two things to a bird and they're happy. <laughs> We're going to reverse that ugly saying. <laughs> Oh my God, you're so cute, but I do agree with you. My doggy, he gets pumpkin uh, or sweet potato. And my niece, my sister doggy, Gigi, who is, by the way, here in the studio, I'm joking, she's my new assistant sleeping uh, like a princess, <laughs> like a queen right now. She loves it too. So I know that, and I heard from a lot of our followers that they love it, but I'm so grateful that, you know, you're mentioning it. And, you know, I also think that a lot of times, um, some parents just give only dry food 
and then they're wondering why their poor babies you know are having some troubles and then maybe you know even if I like I would like to kind of mention and, and eventually if you start adding pumpkin and then maybe start adding green beans and then slowly transition them what you suggest because you you're the professional you know might be a good route for people who are new to this type of uh food uh to four babies so what do you think you the you are the professional I'm just the photographer yeah it's not like introduction of solids for a baby you, you can do it cold turkey but you have to do it in the right way so it, it, it's calculated because you know obviously my dog at only three pounds it's going to eat very differently than my my client's dog you know one of them is 95 pounds so it it's a it's a science right so it has to do i help them out with uh portion sizes and make sure that the overall nutrients are balanced from the food and then bonus you know we we throw in the uh the supplement because for dogs they absolutely need it with the whole foods and then the other thing that we do forget about with dogs just like humans is their gut health so gut health is just as important for dogs as it is for humans and they can actually get worse gut health than humans because you know we're not walking out there eating things in the grass and whatever else you know dogs sniff up there so they're definitely more prone for you know diarrhea which obviously something is going on with their gut health so i am all for because my clients are like oh what probiotic do you give your dog and i said well i actually give a combo in the same supplement is a prebiotic and a probiotic because you need both. And for humans, this is a very important tip because the probiotic feeds off of the prebiotic. So it's kind of like if you had a plant, okay, Apple wants to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, if you had a plant and you, you know, put it in the, uh, the soil, but you didn't give it any water, how is it going to pro, uh, grow properly? So that's the same concept of the pro and prebiotic. They have that synergy and the probiotics got to feed off of the prebiotic. So there's something called love bugs, which I believe is actually from the States. I used to buy it online, but I found it in a store here now, which is amazing. But uh, doesn't matter. You can still buy it online. I've got no disclaimer, nothing to do with them. It's just that they're the only ones that I've ever found that has that combination of the pre and probiotic. And the great thing about that one, also it shows, based on the weight, how much you give your dog. So easy. And again, that one, I just throw it into her pumpkin. And I don't do it at the same time. So like a probiotic should be given with food. So what I would suggest is for the multivitamin, you give that one in the morning with the first feed, and then you wait till the second feed to give the pre and probiotic. This way there's no absorption issues. Um, that's, that would be the best way to do it. Check out our Pet Picks World uh, magazine. It's really a lot of fun. It's the first hybrid magazine. What is hybrid? It has videos. It has some of the lives of uh, some of the interviews I do with people and pet parents from all around the world. It's a lot of fun. Find our magazine in Amazon when you look under Pet Picks World or go to our website petpixworld.com and check it out. At the end of the day, it's a lot of fun. So enjoy the rest of the podcast. This is definitely very interesting and very educational. And I thank you. I mean, this is really great. And this is just from curiosity. So like some people feed their four babies once a day and some people do twice. You don't need to go through the whole logistic why you know, because we know that if people want to learn more, you know, they have to contact you and then it will depend on the weight, breed, I guess, or whatever else, probably even state or like, where do you live, climate. But I'm just curious. So what would you recommend once or twice? Or it depends on pet preference. I'm just curious. Oh, no, it's a great question. And it's interesting because I mean, I've been seeing the same vet for, for years. I, I took care of three dogs for like over 10 years. 
So between Apple and the other dogs, I've had dogs for like 15 years. So I've always gone to the same vet. And obviously my conversation is very different than the average person going in. And I always said to the vet, like, where is this coming from that you should only feed a dog twice a day? And they said, I have no idea. I don't know where it comes from. Um, like we need to realize that dogs are domesticated. They're living in a house now. They're not out in the wild. So, and they do have a metabolism and they do have a digestive tract. Um, so it's very challenging and unhealthy to feed a dog only twice a day. Um, so a couple things. So adult dogs, so like my dog is not a puppy, you know, optimally, four times a day, but some of my clients just realistically, that's never going to work except on a weekend. So we work out, you know, scheduling and it's three times a day. So and then with puppies, with puppies, believe it or not, optimally, it's actually five to six times a day. Wow. I know. This is crazy. So you pretty much, you know, <laughs> the first few weeks you need to be at home on the standby. Wow which is optimal anyways. I mean, if you really are going to train that dog, you really need to commit um, and be there. You know, I mean, if you're fortunate enough to be with somebody or someone else like that you trust that has dogs, like you really, it's optimal for your dog's health. And because you, you got to think about it, they're like a baby. I mean, they can only absorb and eat so much at once. And also it helps with their gut health. I mean especially even like a smaller dog like mine. I mean, can you imagine if I only gave her two large feeds a day when she was a puppy? Like she can't, she cannot eat all that at once. Wow, thank you. This is like very interesting. You're giving us a lot of great information. I'm sure that everyone who is watching this live or the replay or it's listening this as a podcast, you will be very grateful because personally, like you answer a lot of my curiosity. Like it's like I always have these questions, and uh, and it's just really, really great to have the answers from professionals like you. Uh, and you also help people as well. You don't only help oh, babies. Yes, <laughs> yes. It first started off. So I am a registered dietitian first and foremost, which I've been doing for uh, twenty five years, I guess, and I've been doing dog nutrition for about fifteen. But yes, I definitely help out uh, humans. I, and even um, interestingly enough, uh, in Florida, my I call her my co-host dietitian, uh, we have actually an online program. So, I mean, we sell it to anybody. It doesn't matter where you live. Um, and we focused on how to lower your cholesterol because that was, Sarah and I are very passionate about helping people and getting off of their their medication and unfortunately globally the number one uh uh um cardio cardiovascular disease is is heart disease right so we definitely want to help out those so yeah it's fun you people have support from two dietitians and it's online and you get to learn about cooking techniques as well we have a whole array of recipes of how to actually lower your cholesterol it's not just about Nutrition and facts. There's a lot. It's a whole module on fun and cooking. Oh wow! Well, I guess I need your training because I definitely have to master my cooking skills. Uh, but <laughs> it's really interesting. If, if there is one thing you have find out, and like one tip you may would like to tell people about their health overall, it may not necessarily uh, doesn't need to be the high cholesterol. But something now with the summer being here, what would you suggest to people? Well, as we let's go back to the beginning, just as important with hydration as it is for for dogs as it is for humans. So humans are approximately 60 percent, 60 percent of their body is water. So water is so important. Um, females need about eight to 10 cups a day and males need about 10 to 12 cups a day just for basic hydration because if you think about it it regulates our body temperature it cushions our joints it's part of the blood volume and lubricates our eyes and then what everyone always wants to know 
It also helps with uh, digesting of our foods, especially the water soluble nutrients. I mean, you might be eating healthy, but if you're lack of water, then those calories aren't being digested. So then it helps with your metabolism. And dogs are 70 to 80% of their little bodies are made up of water. So that's why they're more prone for heat stroke. So water is important for humans, but dogs even more so. Wow, that's amazing. And you know, I just, uh, one thing I have noticed, and now you're going to be laughing, but if I drink water, I have less wrinkles on my face. Uh, yes. You know, so for all the women, that might be a good trick. It's, it's true. You're not losing your mind because skin is the largest organ. And, it, and if you're hydrated, I know people always ask, like, what did you do? I'm a, I'm a spit away from 50. And I not that there's any judgment. I'm all for whatever people want to do. But I've never had anything done. People are like, what do you do with your skin? And I'm like, number one, I drink water. I love yeah, it skin. makes a huge difference. It really does. Well, believe me, from now on, when I do podcasts or lives, you're going to see me. I have bottles and I keep drinking and drinking. But uh, I mean, I love my coffee, so I know it's not the best. Uh, but, you know, I do it. And I, one thing I started doing recently it's I drink uh, water with lemon three minutes before I have anything, like before coffee or food in the morning. And when I go to sleep, I decided to add also lemon to my water again. Uh, what do you think about this? Is it a good habit? Would you encourage people to maybe consider kind of starting this trend in their lifestyle? Well, I wouldn't suggest drinking water before you go to bed because you're going to be more prone to wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. So you really want to get your water, you know, for functioning healthy kidneys, it's about every 90 minutes that you're going to have to go to the bathroom. But if you're sipping on your water, you're going to have to go every 15 minutes. And it's not like you drink water and it's cellular and it just drops into your stomach. It's not how your, your water is absorbed in your body. So it's it's good to start off in the morning with drinking water, absolutely, because you've been sleeping all day. And in order for your body temperature to rise and get to normal body temperature, which is actually room temperature, I'm gonna, I can't remember what the math is for Fahrenheit, but it's 21 degrees Celsius. So that's normal. I will uh, tell right now it's, oh my God, it's like 70 degrees. Okay, so that's what your normal body temperature is. It's very similar to room temperature, but in order for it to rise in the morning, because you're sleeping all day, is is drinking water, especially in the morning. Okay, so, so mornings routines, yes, check night routines. Absolutely, but I'm yeah, glad yeah. That it's okay. That's why I ask you. I'm sure there are a lot of other people like me, and you know? we learn, and that's why we are so grateful that uh, you know you, you are here with us and. Uh, can you tell people how they can find you and, you know, how they can decide if it's a good fit uh, to work with you? Typically, how does it work? If you're a, a pet parent and also like if you'd like for you as an individual or if you'd like to do it for your for baby or babies. Uh, absolutely. So if you're in North America, I have a U.S. and Canadian nationwide uh, plan. So I'm all about actually connection. So people can reach out to me first on Instagram, which is nutri Nutrition Unique, and private message me and send me their phone number. And I'll actually phone them just to chit chat and see if I'm the right fit. I'm all for that. Um, and then if you're outside of North America, then you can uh, go to my website, nutritionatitsbest.com, send me an email, and you know we can have a little conversation back and forth in an email and then I, I have some clients that do whatsapp video or facebook uh or sorry not facebook but um uh, iphone message or in, and uh, zoom if we end up booking something we can always book a zoom meeting so that's not a problem fantastic fantastic and is there anything else you may would like to tell people Well, for, uh, oh, we got apple, Venaki, Venaki apple, Venaki, apple, Venaki. 
She's like, uh, what's happening over here? Apple? Apple Venneke. Venneke. So cute. So cute that Apple yes. can be part of our interview. Yeah, she came back. She's like, oh, I'm back. Hola. <laughs> Hola, Apple. Yeah, I just think that uh, dogs do better with uh, whole natural foods. I've never had a dog owner regret uh, switching over. Uh, funny, my one of my new clients, they, they just switched over. And uh, she phoned me after a week and she goes, I can't believe it. My dog's fur went from like eh, eh, to unbelievable. She's like, it's been a week. But I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's like human's hair. I mean, if you're missing nutrients, dog's food is so processed. It's more processed than, uh, than, uh, than human food. So yeah, it makes a big difference. Healthy, happier dogs. That's what we want. <laughs> I love this and I cannot thank you enough uh, for being with us today, uh, really giving us so much uh, great information. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. It has been a pleasure having you as always. Also, I want to thank you for the amazing article in our May issue. We are about to publish our June issue as well. So friends, you know, go to petpixacademy.com, check out our magazine, uh, check out our podcast, and all of our information will be below on the live you're watching or if you're listening to the podcast. So thank you, Ali. Have an amazing day. And, you know, you. Uh, also we are going to see you and beautiful Apple very soon. So thank you very much for your wisdom. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode. I really, truly hope you enjoyed it. You learned some new tips and tricks. You feel inspired. Please go below in the description. Uh, follow our amazing speaker. Go and say hi. Also, check out our website, petpixworld.com, and you're going to discover we have great free classes. We also have our new community. We are finally, all of us as passionate pet parents or businesses, we can connect in one place. We also have a lot of resources, specifically only for our website tribe. Yay! Please show us your support. Leave us a review. You can find our podcast in all of the major podcast platforms from all around the world. And don't forget, we have a fantastic, very unique magazine. So you can find our magazine in Amazon when you search for Pet Books World magazine on our website and other magazine platforms. So lastly, don't forget, we are here if you'd like to be highlighted, if you know for any fundraising events you would like for us to share with you, just let us know. So thank you, continue, enjoy, and see you next time in our next podcast episode. This is Vasi, your host and passionate pet mom, exactly like you. So see you soon.